um, I'm Jerry Owen. I'm a test strategist, um, test evangelist. I'm also a senior test manager now um, at Medulin. I'm their test uh, QE architect. I speak and write at a lot of conferences, and I'm really happy to be here today at DevOps Days Rally. So let's go ahead and um, Peter sometimes does this presentation with me. Um, so the agenda here is we'll talk a little bit about what digital transformation is. Um, we'll talk about the synergies between digital transformation and DevOps, and there were quite a few of them. Um, then we'll talk about how to enable digital transformation through continuous delivery. And then finally talk a little bit um, about a test strategy for continuous testing. And you know that will, will depend on uh, how much time we have at the end. So what is, um, what is a digital transformation? Well, you know, it means a lot of things to a lot of people, but basically it's a fundamental shift in the way an organization approaches its business and operational processes by using technology to increase the focus on and improve customer experience, which increases business value. Now, what's the big part of that? The most important part of that is not technology, it's customer, it's enabling customer experience through technology. So that's, that's what a digital, a digital transformation is all about. Um, so the focuses of a digital transformation um, versus DevOps, you know, that's a little bit different. So a digital trans transformation, as we just mentioned, it uses technological innovation to increase the business value by enhancing the customer experience. And it also streamlines operational processes and business models and methodologies. So now DevOps, on the other hand, enables innovation through technology and operations, increases business value by enhancing customer experience, and also streamlines process and eliminates bottlenecks. So you can see there's the synergy right there. So that would suggest that um, to have a real su successful digital transformation, you really need DevOps. So let's talk a little bit about the synergies more specifically. Um, that if you look at the DevOps principles that are described in the three ways, you have systems thinking, amplifying feedback loops, and creating a, a culture of experimentation through continued learning, right? So what we can see here is that these are the same principles that would be used to create any kind of a major change. And, and that's the other thing about a digital transformation or any transformation for that matter, it's a big change. And it's not only a change in technology and process and methodology, but it's a change in focus. It's, it's a change in using technology to create customer experience. It's focusing on customer experience. And, and, and that's what, what DevOps is about too, it is, is increasing business value. Business value, not, tech, not, not necessarily technology value, but using business value to, using technology to improve business value. So what some more of the synergies? Well, let's look at them a little deeper. So what systems thinking? Well, it's focusing on the performance of entire process and it's the most effective and it's the most effective approach to transforming business models and operating operational processes. So when you when you you do fit when you do real systems thinking, you 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 dig down, you ask the five whys, and, and you look at why, how, and and find where the issues are and meld them together in a smooth process. Um, and, this, and this eliminates the silos between IT and business operations. So if you, have, if you make changes in a digital transformation, you, you, if you make changes just to the operating model or just to the technology model, it's gonna fail. It, it needs to, the systems thinking brings those changes together and that enables the fundamental shift in the business workflows, also in the mindset. So the next synergy, amplifying feedback loops. 
Now we know that's that is the, that is a basic tenet of DevOps. Um, it, it's how it's how we make the continuous pipeline run smoothly, right? We amplify the feedback loops. We get early feedback, immediate feedback. Um, but that's also critical to a digital transformation so that the corrections can be made early and often. Um, then there's, there's also focusing on responsive, effective, and efficient customer service to all the internal and external customers. And again, that's, 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 that's what DevOps, that's what DevOps is about too, right? Um, so then another synergy is creating a culture of ex continuous experimentation and learning. DevOps is about fail fast, right? Try things, try things. If they don't work, move on, try something else. It encourages innovation without the fear of consequences. It, it, but new processes may not always work. Technology approaches sometimes fail. But if we really take the, the risks, and push the limits, that's what leads to true groundbreaking innovation. And if we don't have that, if we don't have the groundbreaking in innovation, taking a whole different mindset and approach, we're not gonna have a successful transformation. Transformations involve something different. They involve innovation that's, that's, that is a true innovation that's not just you know, the kind of the difference between innovation and, and, um, and just doing something a little differently is that true innovation takes all kinds of, takes all kinds of different thoughts, puts them all together um, and, and comes up with something new. Um, for, uh, Johansson um, brought this out. He, um, developed a theory on on that if you put together people from all different fields you can you can bring about change that is not well this is what we did last time and okay so now we're going to go in this direction it's not change it's not basing it's not basing innovation off of your previous baseline it's 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 taking a completely new direction so here's kind of what I see it in, in um, you know, in, in, a, in a pictorial um, way, you know, so you've got, you've got your business value, right? Your business value focus, your customer centric focus. Um, within that, you have your tenants of systems thinking, leading continuous learning um, and amplifying feedback loops. And then when you get into the, you get in there, you've got your, your whole ideation, plan, deliver, implement, monitor, test, do, you know, it, it's a continuous circle. And that's, that's where DevOps is. So if, so it, you can kind of look at it this way. Um, DevOps sits within the digital transformation. Okay, so now in order to have a digital transformation, continuous delivery, um, continuous integration, you have to have continuous testing. Um, and and this, this the, the thing about continuous testing is it focuses on quality at every stage in the continuous delivery process and quality is the core of a customer-centric focus. Um, we, we manage the risk by increasing the effectively of our test processes. And of course, assessing and mitigating risk is, is the primary goal. Continuous testing is, is, is very critical because you know, as testers, and, and I'm a tester, <laughs> um, I don't know how many other testers we have out in the audience, but um, you know, when you think about it, who is responsible for quality? I, in, in my other presentation there, um, I, I ask, I usually ask at the beginning of the presentation for a show of hands, how many people, how many of you are developers? How many are, are, are operations folks? How many are systems analysts? How many of you are responsible for quality? 
Well, usually at the, I'll ask the question at the beginning and I'll get a show of hands. Usually mostly the testers raise their hand. Um, but at the end, what I, what I try to show is that we are all responsible for quality. And in a digital transformation, that's, that's, that's even more critical because our, um, you know, as, as we have to, as testers, be the guardians of the company's reputation. And the way we do that is being the champion of the customer. So in a way, we also have to enable digital transportate, digital transformation through continuous testing. So how do we do that? Well, um, we, we want to look at establishing a safety net that helps the DevOps team protect the user experience. That's, that's the, auto, the early feedback, the automation, um, having stable test environments, um, integrating seamlessly in the software delivery pipeline and the, and the DevOps tool chain. I mean, I, I don't see really how you can have DevOps without continuous testing. And that delivers the actionable feedback that's appropriate for every stage in the pipeline. It's something new. You know, we're not testing at the end of each sprint anymore or the old waterfall testing after development. This is, it's a transformation. And, and the customer focus enables the digital transformation. So what are the components of the test strategy? Well, we need to streamline the test processes. We need to champion team responsibility for quality. And that's, that's probably the most important one. We need to increase velocity and improve quality. Test throughout the build and delivery pipeline. Implement the automated checkpoints. Shift left in both functional and non-functional. And shift right. Implement by implementing continuous monitoring and testing in production. So how do we increase the effectiveness of our test processes? Well, the main part of that is optimizing that, you know, everybody says, oh, test automation. Yes, but before you can automate your tests, you should optimize your tests. Otherwise, you know, I, I like some of my clients, I, I, had, I had one organization and they were moving from Agile to DevOps. They had a regression suite, an automated regression suite that ran two weeks. That's not going to work. You need to make sure that the tests are, and you need to optimize the test cases. You, may, you need to make sure they're functioning and they're on focusing on the functionality they're validating. They need to be simple because the more complex the test, the more effort you're going to have to validate the script itself. Um, and, and even though you can use service virtualization to fill in for missing components, which a lot of times we do, try to keep the tests uh, as independent as possible. Now, optimizing the test suites. Well, when you're putting together a regression test selection, the first thing you got to realize is it's an ongoing process. You can't have a big automation effort. Okay, good. We're done. Well, with DevOps and with digital transformation, we're, we're, taking, we're taking feedback from the customer, right? We're, we're seeing what's working and what's not. We're taking our feedback from the customer and updating our workflows, our, our, our features accordingly. So when you've got continuous delivery, you could, your features are gonna be continuously changing. So, you have to keep updating your regression suite. You need to you need to track how the tests are functioning. We need to do cleanup, analyze the metrics. Are they really hitting what we need to test? Are we getting defects in production? And it just continues. So we want to make sure that we include the test cases that validate the high risk areas of the code. We need to include test cases that validate customer centric features. Again, customer. We need to validate the critical business workflows. And those, those may very well be changing in a, in a digital transformation. So there again, we need to be ready to change. And it also helps to um, use functional automation tools that we can create multi-purpose scripts. We need to be able to run across platforms and browsers. Um, 
We need to, we can even sometimes gather some of our performance um, information with our, our automated tests. Now, just a couple of things about the automated tests running. Um, it's helpful to run them in parallel. We want to make sure that autonomous, that they don't rely on the previous results of other tests. We want to keep them quick running. Um, and for the most part, each test should create and delete its own data. Um, unless, you know, we're, when we're testing workflows, then we may have to, but for the most part, um, we need to keep the test so that um, it's not going to leave data in a state that will need to be cleaned up afterwards, because that would that would hinder our, our continuous, it would create a bottleneck and, and hinder our continuous flow. So talking about bottlenecks, well, you know, we have to identify the bottlenecks and because they impede, they impede velocity. And in a digital transformation, again, things move fast. Um, and, and, and again, just like uh, updating your test automation, mitigating bottlenecks is an ongoing process. You need to look at the, you need to identify them, figure out the consequences, manage them, critical thinking, and prevent future bottlenecks. So we can increase velocity by shifting left. We want to push automation to the base of the test pyramid, use TDD, BDD, pair developers with testers. Um, you know, as, as much as we want to automate everything, we can't automate 100%. There's still, there's still manual and exploratory testing that needs to be done because that's the way you find a lot of your, your usability issues. And again, in a digital transformation, when you're relying on all the, diff, all the digital channels for your customers, um, if, if you have usability issues, they're going, they're going to your competitor. You know, if, if I can't, if I can't uh, put my uh, new jeans in, in, into, the, into the shopping cart and check out easily, I'm going to get them at a different website, you know, um, and amplified, amplifying the feedback, the automated feedback loops enables risk-based decision-making. And again, risk-based decision-making is critical in digital transformation. You need to make decisions based on what's going to work best for the customer, but you need to do it quick. So how do we improve quality? Well, the whole team needs to take responsibility. Um, developers need to embrace testing. Yeah, they don't like it. But if they kind of learn that it, if they can see what's in it for them, that there'll be fewer defects coming back at them. I was in a meeting this morning um, working on implementing some unit testing um, plans and well, you know, we'll have to try it out and see see what it does to our velocity in the sprint. If and I'm like, well, okay. It, then the, the tech manager's like, well, it's going to slow them down. Yeah, but we may pick up speed on the other end. So you know, you, you, everybody has to be on board to embrace embrace quality. So how do we implement this through the pipeline? Well, we implement automated tests in each stage. So we want to build into, we want integration, code analysis, assemble the distribution, push the binaries. Um, you know, we, we need to, the only thing that gets triggered manually in this whole process is your UAT and your deployment to production. And when you finally get to continuous delivery, even that gets automated. So, implementing the checkpoints. We need unit tests to verify code. The, key, the component tests should be verifying the key features. Um, we don't get to the automated regression tests until we get to right before the deployment. Um, and, and that should be fine as long as we've, we've, we've done all of our base testing. Um, you know, the, the other thing that we have to look at is, is what, what type of a business are we in? Are we in a, 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 in a, 
um, medical field where a software device can potentially kill somebody if it's not tested well enough or an automated or a, a, a driverless car. Well, then we need to make sure we're doing heavy testing. But if we're in an organization that that's, that's coming out with a whole new product and there's competitors also, maybe we need to be first to market. We have to understand our business. That's the business, the organizational part of the transformation. We need to understand that and, and plan accordingly with risk. So, you know, we can, we definitely want to shift left. We need, we need everybody involved early, um, automate, embrace the test automation period, and even the non-functional, you know, it's important really to, to get the non-functional um, performance testing and security testing in there because um, design flaws, they, most of the bugs are design flaws. And of course, if that gets toward the end of the pipeline, then you're, you're, you're gonna have a big bottleneck because it's more time and more money to correct those. Uh, finally, your continuous monitoring and in, in test in production. Um, this, this, of course, comes from the principle of amplifying feedback loops, um, but it gives you, it also, it gives you the, it enables collecting and anal anal analyzing data and metrics to optimize the customer experience. And especially when you're doing a digital transformation, you're, you're offering your customers new digital channels. Um, you really need that metric so you can correct things if, it didn't work out quite the way you, you anticipated. Um, basically, it, again, it's, it's, it is, it's all about, it's all about the customer and, and having that kind of data allows the, the DevOps teams and the stakeholders to, to make adjustments. Um, and, you know, some of the testing and production that we can do is uh, monitoring data and transactions, simulating transactions, maybe even A-B testing experimentation with friendly users. All of that gives, especially in a digital transformation, getting the users involved early gives us the information that we need to make it successful. So I think we're just about there. Um, so the, the DevOps principles can be the basis for creating the major changes that are required for digital transformation. Our synergies are found in the three ways, systems thinking, amplifying feedback loops, and creating a culture of continuous experimentation and learning. Um, enabling digital transformation through continuous delivery involves applying the synergistic focuses of digital transformation and DevOps across the pipeline. And finally, continuous testing enables digital transformation throughout the continuous delivery pipeline by ensuring a customer-centric focus. So, have a few um, little references here. And um, I have really, really enjoyed being here with you. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them now. All right, thanks, Jerry. Um, it's like we do have a little bit of Q&A here. Um, trying to figure out how to get back to, uh, huh. well, maybe I need an escape, right? To, ah, there we go. <laughs> and you can look, at right. these, you can look at these in the Q and A if you want to, or I'll just go ahead and pose the first question from you. Uh, Jean Marcel asks, uh, what do you think of tools like test rail? Uh, so Jay, do you have any experience with uh, tool like test rail? <laughs> test rail. Oh boy. <laughs> Sounds like the answer is yes, so go for it. Yeah, you know, um, I think, I, yeah, it's 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 a it's a good tool. There there are tons of test management tools out there, and and I think it's important to have a test management tool because a lot of well, like Jira, um, if you're using Jira, uh, you need you you don't have the functionality within. Um, within JIRA itself to manage your testing, manage your test cases, get your execution metrics. Um, and so JIRA, they, there's all kind, all of your test tools, including TestRail, they all have a JIRA plugin. So um, I would say, you know, if you want to um, 
you know, if you're using Diera, definitely get a plugin. Um, the one tool that I've noticed um, that Rally actually has a pretty good test management um, in in it. Um, but yeah, I think it's it, 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 you do need you do need a test management tool. And you know, depending on what you're actually, you know, if you're going to evaluate test management tools, the way I always start doing that is is by looking at your requirements first, figure out what do you need? What do you need it to integrate with? Um, what, what are you trying to achieve with it? How many users are you gonna have? Um, so that you can look at the different pricing models and whatnot. But, you know, I, I, I've seen people, oh, they're gonna, we're gonna use test rail. We're gonna use, we're gonna use uh, uh, um, ALM. Um, they, they grab a tool before analyzing their requirements. So definitely look at your requirements before you select a tool. All right, yeah. excellent. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Now we've had a, several people uh, very interested in your references, which weren't up for very long. So uh, while we, uh, and we have a couple other questions, but could you, would you mind Jerry to share your reference slide again? We had several people ask if you could uh, post that up again so they could get along. Sure. And there we go. So, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to read. Okay. I'm not gonna be able to read the questions now. <laughs> so that's, that's okay, gonna, no I worries. Uh, I, can, I can kind of moderate through the questions if okay. you don't mind. All right. um, yeah, so our next question comes from Brandon uh, who says, my team is constantly struggling with defining integration tests. Should we mock out external services, hit the real thing? What if the external service is unreliable in QA, which causes our tests to be unreliable? Uh, any advice around these sorts of problems? Yeah, you know, I, I think it, 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 and integration testing is always a challenge. Um, if it's, it's always best to use the real thing, but I think if you can, again, you know, shift left. Um, yeah, mock out the services, um, use service virtualization. If you need to spin up environments, um, the, 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 you know, okay, there is going to be some unreliability, but you need to balance that against um, the early feedback that you really need with, with DevOps. Uh, amen to that. Uh, excellent. Uh, appreciate that. And then we have uh, one more question here in the chat. Uh, Javier asks, a few tools such as BlazeMeter, uh, an open source tool, and SmartBear uh, have that are focused on continuous testing. Do you have any other suggestions uh, for continuous testing tools? Well, you know, you can you, you can really use whatever um, it, whatever tools you want. I mean, I think you know, pretty much uh, most of the vendors now are are trying to gear their tools um, to a light touch. Um, again, make sure you, you you're. Um, you're integrating your 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 before you choose a tool figure out what you're integrating with figure out what you want to get out of it how do you you know how do you what specifically are you trying to do with the tool um you know is are you looking for a test management tool or you're looking for your you know you, you you may want to look at something that would you can use you can create both your some of your performance scripts as you're creating your automation scripts. Again, you know, you're trying to streamline. So yeah, I mean, uh, they're all, all the tools are good, but the one that's right for you is the one that meets your requirements. Uh, yeah, great answer. It's uh, a tool is really, uh, a tool does what the, the hand of the tool holder does with it. <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, it's Absolutely. really what you what you need to achieve with your tests, uh, and really, I'd say more importantly, the um, just meeting the requirement of the need for continuous testing, which you can, you know, really use any number of tools for. Uh, doesn't have to be a, a COTS or off the shelf tool either. I'd just add that. I mean, you know, there may be something you have mm -hmm. that uh, you know you can roll your own or, or whatever. But uh, um, uh, great answer. Uh, all right, we have uh, another question or two here. We have just one or two more minutes for questions. Uh, Michael asks, so we have a 10-year-old product with 15-year-old code and zero automated tests. There's pressure for a complete rewrite. Can you suggest how to put pinning tests or characterization tests around legacy code to do testing against new quote-unquote rewrite? Well, there again, um, I think what you need to do is, is, is focus on the customer. 
um, you know, what, what, how is the rewrite going to happen? Understand the, understand the, the background of it. Um, you know, what, what is, are your workflows going to change? Are you going, are you rewriting it or are you going to use a SAS tool? Um, you know, you, you have to look at the requirements to figure out how you're going to plan your tests um, around it. Um, I think, I think one of the other speakers wanted to say something on that one too. I thought I saw something pop up here. Is that Michael there? I'm noticing, uh, yeah, the magic bullet thinking is that we'll have magically created tests on new code despite every, yeah. Um, the, yeah, that, that can happen. Um, but uh, you wanna just, again, it, it, when, when you're, you know, whatever code, whatever, whether it's legacy code that you're rewriting, whether it's something totally new, you wanna focus, you're testing on the critical functionality, the code, the most complex code, and um, the and the um, customer. How do you break magical thinking? Oh wow! <laughs> well, um, yeah, training is helpful. Dojos are good because you get that that collaboration. Um, you know, if you can look at it, history repeats itself. So if you can find some history that you can show has, um, you know, history of, of some of the other projects that you can show that magical thinking caused disaster. Um, that's, that's a good way to, to bring some, you know, into it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, there again too, you've got all your, um, you know, your, your, your uh, uh, um, heuristics, uh, the, the biases, the planning fallacy and all that. So you want to try to, you know, avoid those. 